Summary of Soldier's Home by Ernest Hemingway Krebs goes back to his home state of Oklahoma in the summer of 1919 after fighting in World War I. The man is one of the last ones to return because he stayed on the Rhine until the second division left for home. While the other troops were welcomed with cheers when they got home, by the time Krebs gets there, the chaos has calmed down. Krebs doesn't want to talk about what he did in the war at first. When he finally does want to talk, no one in town wants to hear him because they've already heard horrible stories from other troops. Krebs thinks he has to lie about the war in order to get people to read his stories. He uses other men's experiences and exaggerates his own. No matter how small, these lies make him sick and disgusted by his own memories. Krebs wastes time by sleeping late, eating, reading, playing the clarinet, going to the pool room, and walking around his town. His mom wants to know about what it was like for her son to be in the war, but when she goes into his room to ask, she looks away. The wealthy father of the boy is non-committal. A lot has stayed the same in town. For example, Krebs was not allowed to drive the family car before the war, but it is still the same car. Krebs sees that the only thing that has changed is that the neighborhood girls are older now. Likes to watch them walk by from his front porch. Krebs says he vaguely wants a girl, but he doesn't think it's worth it to get to know her because he knows it will make him lie more. Krebs checks on the girls and reads a war history book at the same time. He really likes looking at the maps. By reading about the war, he gets a better idea of what took place and thinks he was a good soldier. Krebs' mother walks into his room one morning and tells him that she and his dad have chosen to let him borrow the family car. Krebs then goes to the kitchen for food. Helen, his favorite younger sister, makes fun of him for staying up late. She asks Krebs if he loves her, and he says, sure. To make him laugh, she asks him to come over to the playground that afternoon and watch her play baseball. If he doesn't, she says, he doesn't really love her. Krebs's mother starts to ask him if he knows what he is going to do after Helen goes. She looks worried. She tells him she's been praying for him and tells him to get to work. After they're done talking, she tells Krebs that he should go see his dad at work. She asks Krebs if he loves her, and he says, no. Krebs says he doesn't love anyone when his mother starts to cry, but then he says he didn't mean it. Krebs feels sick when he sees how his mother is feeling. Then his mom makes him pray with her, even though he says he can't. Krebs feels bad for his mom and thinks about how she made him lie. He plans to find work in Kansas City and not go see his dad because he wants his life to go smoothly. He is going to watch his sister play baseball in the playground before he leaves. About the author Ernest Hemingway grew up in a neighborhood in Chicago. His first job after high school was working for the Kansas City Star, but he quit after only six months to join the Red Cross Ambulance Corps during World War I. He was hurt while serving and was given the Silver Medal of Military Valor. He then moved to Ontario and Chicago, where he met Hadley Richardson, the woman who would become his first wife. They moved to Paris in 1921, where he worked on his writing and became friends with F. Scott Fitzgerald and other American writers from the lost generation who had lived abroad for a long time. After his first book, The Sun Also Rises, came out in 1926, he left Hadley and married Pauline Pfeiffer, who was born in Arkansas. Hemingway wrote A Farewell to Arms, 1929, which was a big hit, while the couple lived in Florida. Hemingway finally moved to Spain to work as a war reporter during the Spanish Civil War. It was this job that gave him the ideas for his famous book For Whom the Bell Tolls, which came out in 1939. After it came out, he met Martha Gellhorn, who would become his third wife. Hemingway married Mary Hemingway, his fourth and last wife, in 1946. They lived in Cuba together for 14 years. Hemingway won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1953 for The Old Man and the Sea. He also won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1954. Hemingway killed himself in 1961. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.